Welcome everyone to Video Editing and Production with Adobe Premiere Pro. Thanks so much for joining us today. Before we get started with the content at hand, I would like to make sure everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk, the tool we are using. You can feel free to chat in to us using the box at the lower left side of your screen to let us know if you have any trouble uh, or if you have any issues with the audio, and for you to ask your questions of our presenter today. So feel free to chat in to us at any time throughout the webinar. We will keep all lines muted so you get a nice clear recording that you can refer to again at a later time or share with your friends and colleagues. Most of you are hearing the audio play through your computer speakers, so if you are hearing an echo, just know that you may be logged in more than once and will need to close an instance of ReadyTalk. If at any time the audio and the slides fall out of sync, we recommend dialing into the toll-free phone number by phone or Skype that Susan has chatted out in the window, and she will send that back to you at any time if you need that. If you lose your Internet connection, go ahead and click the reminder or confirmation emails you would have received when you registered. For those of you registered before 10 o'clock this morning Pacific, you would have received an email from me about an, exactly an hour ago that had the slide deck attached on the right side. You can download that. It's called Presentation and then the name of this event. So you can download the slides to watch along with us. But keep in mind that today we will do a fair amount of our, our presentation will be live demoing and, and screen sharing. So those slides may not be fully representative of what we'll cover, but we wanted you to have them as a resource and reference either way. If at any time you lose your phone connection, for those of you who do dial in by phone, you can redial uh, the, the toll-free number that Susan has chatted out. We are recording this event, so anything you may miss or if you have to step away, you'll be able to refer to it again later on our website at TechSoup.org community slash events dash webinars. We also upload our events to our TechSoup video channel on YouTube, and you'll see these slides later on SlideShare as well. Within a few days you'll receive a follow-up email from me that includes the full presentation and recording that you can watch again at your convenience, and any links that we discuss. If you'd like to tweet us today, you can do so at TechSoup or using the hashtag TSWebinars. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, and I'm happy to be your host today. I um, am joined by Glenn Fajardo who is the Director of Co-Design Practice here at TechSoup Global. He comes from us uh, working specifically with our TechSoup Global Network, and those are all of the partner organizations we have in countries all around the world, and he has experience designing trainings for them, creating videos for them. Um, and so he comes with quite a bit of experience having used Adobe Premiere Pro himself a lot. And so we're happy to have him as our host today, or our expert today. Um, and you'll also see assisting on the back end Susan Hope Bard from TechSoup. She will be there to help manage your questions. And you may also see Terry McGrath who is joining us from Adobe who can help answer questions on and off uh, specifically about the Adobe Creative Cloud program. Looking at our objectives today, we really want this event to be about lessening any fears you may have about how to begin editing video, and specifically with Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the first webinar that we've done on Adobe Premiere Pro, so we are kind of making this the starting point of our content on this. We don't expect to get in-depth and very technical uh, in the weeds with all of the different features and functionality in-depth. We just really want to make sure that you're feeling more comfortable so you can start editing video. We want to uh, let you see what Adobe Premiere looks like in real time and understand what the panel layout is all about so you know what the different panels do and, and kind of the, the gist of how to use those, what you can find in the different panels in Adobe Premiere Pro. And we want you to have some additional resources to help determine if Adobe Premiere Pro is the tool for your editing needs. So the majority of you took the uh, pre-registration survey when you registered for this event. And I'm not going to repeat it here today, but we had about 80% had ranked themselves as a 2 or lower on a scale of 0 to 5 when it comes to experience. So that means that the great majority of you have not spent a lot of time in this tool, which is why we really want to target it to that core audience of people who, who are not um, experts by any stretch on this. So I hope that that helps set some context for what we are going to cover today. And if you feel like you are more advanced 
on this topic and you want to stick with us anyway, we would welcome you to. And you can share any tips or expertise you may have uh, in the chat window, and we can share that back out with our audience. Before we get started with the content, this is just my housekeeping that we do every time, just a little bit about TechSoup. If you uh, are not familiar with our organization, we're a nonprofit that's working to build a dynamic bridge to help enable civil society organizations around the world to gain access to the resources they need to design and implement solutions for a more equitable planet. That's a mouthful, but we provide technology resources and information in every place on this map that's blue, which is pretty much everywhere except a handful of embargoed countries. Right, go ahead and chat in to let us know from where you are joining today. And if you are joining us from outside the United States, you would be best benefited by going to www.techsoup.global and selecting your country from the map, uh, from the drop-down list, so that you can find uh, the donation and discount programs available to your organization in your country or region of the world. Uh, today's program, we are focused on the U.S.-based program, but Adobe Creative Cloud has launched in many, many other places around the world uh, through our partners. So you can find it in many places aside from the U.S. as well. Um, and just looking quickly at our impact, uh, I have not updated these in the past couple of months, but I should because this number now is 5.8. $4 billion in technology products and grants that have been facilitated and delivered to NGOs for the greater good through TechSoup's programs with donor partners like Adobe, Microsoft, Symantec, and many others. So thank you all for taking the time to chat in to let us know from where you are joining. With that, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our expert presenter today, Glenn Fajardo, who is going to take us through uh, what Adobe Premiere Pro looks like, hopefully help lessen those fears and, and get you started on deciding whether this is the right tool for your needs, and um, show us what it's all about. So thank you so much, Glenn, for joining. Thanks so much, Becky. Um, uh, good morning everybody, and I have to apologize in advance. I'm a little bit under the weather today. I'm a little bit spacey, but I'm really excited to uh, be with you here today and kind of give you an overview of Premiere Pro. Now, we're not going to be able to teach you how to be a professional editor in the next uh, – in the remainder of the hour that we have with you today. But I did my, – my basic message is this, that it's, it's worth trying it out and seeing what you can do. And that's the best way to find out whether Premiere Pro is, is for you. But I like to start with this, this idea that uh, Premiere Pro, it's easier than flying a jet plane. Really, you can do it. Now, what, what does that mean? Like that's, that's kind, of a, kind of an odd analogy to start with. But when you think of a jet plane and you see the, the cockpit, there's a ton of controls. There's a lot of all these different things and all these crazy things. And you wonder like how people even learn how to fly in the first place. And when you first go into Premiere Pro, um, you'll you'll see quite a few different panels and a lot of different controls, and it can feel kind of intimidating at first. But one way to kind of uh, sort of dive into it and, and is, to, is to first take a step back and think about you know, what, what is it that we're really trying to accomplish in Premiere Pro, and like what, what is editing about, and how do I kind of break this down into components that I can start to kind of wrap my head around. And so what you'll learn in this webinar is uh, the, the, the four following things. One is um, – Video editing feels intimidating. How, how do I even begin to learn? What are, what are some uh, first steps that I can take? Uh, the second thing is we'll, we'll talk about <coughs> what is Adobe Premiere Pro and how is it similar and different from other video editing tools. So uh, if you've looked around for video editing tools, you might have uh, found out that there's seemingly hundreds, you know, even thousands of video editing programs out there, and, which is great. There's a lot, of, a lot of different choices. And you might be wondering, like, uh, what is it about Premiere Pro like, that is uh, uh, similar or different? Uh, what, are, what are some of the, um, the reasons why it might be uh, better suited for me and, um, and, and, and why not? Um, the third thing is we're going to show just a little bit on what it's like to use Adobe Premiere Pro. And <coughs> again, the um, part of what um, – what I'd like to encourage you to do is just to see that it's, it's really more um, approachable than, uh, uh, than one might think. Um, and we'll, we'll do a short demo of it. And then um, the fourth thing is just to start getting you thinking about, like, is Adobe Premiere Pro for me? And, and um, just a spoiler alert, what, what, what eventually it's going to lead to is this idea of encouraging you to try it and that there is uh, um, a free trial available 
that you can that you can try it with. And I'll also point you to a resource uh, from Adobe that uh, actually walks you through creating your first video. Um, and that, that's a that's a separate training, but I'd, I'd really like to strongly encourage you to do that, and we'll, we'll point you to that at the end. So. Um, Let's, let's go ahead and dive into the first point, like this idea of like, how, how do I start learning? And I think the key to it, and I've, I've taught um, uh, our partner NGOs in video editing in different places like, uh, like uh, our partners in Argentina, our partners in Kenya. And uh, I like to think of uh, my, my colleague Augustina in, um, in Argentina. And she works for an, our partner organization called Wingu. And when she started, she had like zero background in video editing at all. And uh, she's also this tremendously shy person. She never shot video before. She had done nothing. And then now she's able to, um, to uh, shoot and edit, edit video really well. And in reflecting on the, her experiences, one of the things that, that was uh, most helpful to her is just diving in, trying it, and then kind of learning by doing and, 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 and trying it out. And I think, I think from my own experiences as well, like I think you have to kind of uh, try it to see how it works in practice. The tendency might be to watch a lot of like tutorials or try to like you know spend hours and hours trying to get yourself ready. Um, I think the most important thing is to is to uh, like uh, download a, a video editing program, uh, such as downloading the free trial of Adobe Premiere Pro, and then kind of really diving into it and starting to work with it in practice and see how it how how it goes. But um, I want to start with this idea, though, of uh, you know what is editing because it, it seems like this very arcane thing uh, for a lot of people. Like you know, they, they under, they've we've all like watched TV, we've all like watched movies, but what what's really involved in the process of like editing video? And so I thought I might relate it to something that is that might be a little bit more familiar for folks. So I like to think of editing as uh, cooking. So you know, what, what, how are editing and cooking uh, similar? What, really what you're doing in, in both editing and cooking is you're taking a whole bunch of raw ingredients and you're selecting the parts that you want to use from those uh, raw ingredients, and then you're sort of combining them and treating them in different ways to create a new final product that has a different feel. So for example, what you see in this photo is the ingredients to you know, what could be like a, like a chickpea stew or a chickpea soup. Um, now, if you just uh, started biting into like the, uh, the the chickpeas or biting into like the raw pumpkin or the the raw green pepper, that's going to be one experience. But when you uh, you know you cut them up, <laughs> you uh, you cook parts of them, you combine them in different ways, you create a whole different new experience. So editing is like cooking. It's and and um, and in how do you learn how to cook? Um, you have to learn uh, to cook by actually sort of trying it and getting some experience with. Uh, you know, chopping ingredients, learning how to, you know, how to uh, put things in a, in, in a pot or a pan, and uh, be able to cook them in the right time. And there's a little bit of trial and error, but, it, but it's something that uh, I, I really strongly believe that, that almost anyone can do. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting in there, trying it, getting some experience, and getting some uh, kind of feedback of, is this, is this tasting correct? You know, is this, is, this, is this something that people would actually want to eat? So to further uh, go with the demo, I think what we'll do, um, uh, Becky, if we'll go to the, um, we'll show you sort of the raw ingredients, and then we'll show you the final videos as one demo, and we'll we'll go through this more throughout this webinar. So um, first, we'll we'll start with this is some raw video, and you know it's like oh, it's a baby, it's it's cute, <laughs> you know like, and this is the kind of thing that you might uh, you might kind of record, and that's that's. Uh, that's great. You know, that's 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 one element, and then you might have another video like uh, like the uh, this one where it's um, it's like, hey, it's another shot of the baby. You know, like and and it's it, it's uh, again, and oh, it's like you know, reaching out its hand. So now, what would happen if you could, you know, take several of these things and tell a complete story about this, and instead, it's a story about um, a father like feeding uh, his kid. You know what would look now like. Now I have to it around. Turns out the flavor gives it a nice bouquet on the back end. Oh no! Say please.
Okay, so so you, you can you can see that there it's, it's a different experience. So like wa watching the first two videos, that's like biting into like the raw bell pepper, or, or you know trying to try to um, you know uh, wrap wrap your mouth around like the uh, like a big pumpkin or, or or whatnot. But when you see the final video, that's like the final chickpea stew that comes out, and that's that's like the warm you know kind of. Uh, kind of tasty and like all these sort of multi-dimensional things, all these different flavors that are kind of hitting you at the same time, and so uh, that's what that's that's one thing I'd like to uh, kind of uh, um, start with is this idea of editing as cooking. It's a process of combining and transforming into a new product that is easy for people to 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 kind of eat. So what is Premiere Pro? So Premiere Pro is, um, and I'll go ahead and switch back here. Um, what is Premiere Pro? So Premiere Pro is um, a, a very, very powerful video editing program. And um, it may seem a little strange that we're, we're, we're talking about it that, that, that a whole bunch of people might be using it uh, because it's so powerful that it's now used it to, to edit full feature films. So if if you have heard of the movies like uh, Deadpool um, or uh, Gone Girl, those those were edited in Adobe Premiere uh, Premiere Pro. It's, um, it's 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 kind of okay. Sorry, one second here to make sure. Okay, sorry about that. I did not make the switch back. Okay. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is a very powerful video editing program that is like literally used to to um, to edit um, like full feature films, like major releases, like like Deadpool or like uh, Gone Girl, which had a, a Ben Affleck and <laughs> Rosamund Pike, uh, and some of you might have seen those movies. And you might think, wow, that's kind of crazy that this, this super powerful program that is used to edit this is something, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this? Like, how am I, you know, how's, how's that going to happen? But you can, you can use it through, and it's available through TechSoup. And the, the great thing about Adobe Premiere Pro is that it's, it's simple enough for, I think, anyone to use, but it's powerful enough and extendable enough that you can, as you grow in your different uh, directions of how you might want to edit, it's got plenty of capability that you can keep on tapping into, that you can keep on learning about. And I know that uh, I myself have, uh, well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably um, facile in, in uh, Premiere. I, I always learn a new thing every day, but it's not hard for me to kind of uh, find those new things that I can, I can stretch into. So what distinguishes Adobe Premiere Pro from other uh, video editing tools? Uh, I would. There's, there's a lot of different things, but I want to highlight just two. One is that you have a very fine degree of control and a boatload of tools. So, uh, so as, as a couple of examples, you might have uh, like video edit, other video editing programs, you might be able to kind of cut things down to the quarter of a second, uh, like in terms of your edits. Um, with uh, Premiere Pro, um, you can, you know, depending on how your, how your footage was shot, you can cut it down literally down to the frame. So if your footage was shot like in 30 frames per second, you're getting it at 1 30th of a second, you can literally make cuts that fine. And it actually turns out that that's super useful to have that degree of fine control. Um, the second thing is you just have a boatload of tools in terms of the different, um, the different things that you can do around uh, effects, uh, around like uh, video effects at color correction, uh, audio effects, and like other sort of uh, ways in which you can enhance the audio and video. There's, there's just a lot of capability that, that Premiere has that, that a lot of other video editing tools don't have quite that degree of uh, sophistication. Uh, although I'd have to say, like, the, in general, like in, with uh, video editing software, uh, things are becoming more and more powerful. There's really these cool things now even on the mobile device level where uh, you can edit video on your mobile device with some, some programs. Uh, and uh, Adobe also has like uh, Adobe Premiere Clip with this as well. But um, there's a lot of capability, but um, there's a lot of fine work that you can do in Premiere that is 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 very powerful. Um, the second thing, and I think this is this is something that is very very different from a lot of uh, video editing tools, is that 
uh, Adobe Premiere Pro uh, Creative Cloud, it allows you to collaborate with other people uh, who have uh, Premiere Pro and Creative Cloud to, uh, for you to work together on projects. Um, and I have uh, firsthand experience in this working with, uh, again, with our partners in Argentina and Kenya. We'll literally edit video files together, and um, you know, I'll come back to Augustina. Like, <laughs> like Augustina and I have never, we've, we've actually never met each other face to face. I've never, I've never been to Argentina, um, and and yet we're able to make these very like uh, like interesting videos together, and be able to edit things and show things in context of how how you know what's what's working, what's not working in an edit, and be able to discuss it through the cloud collaboration that's available through uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, the Creative Cloud version. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what it's like to use Premiere Pro. And I'm going to start with a little bit of an overview of some basic uh, sort of concepts and, and uh, terminology. And then we'll go ahead and demo uh, some things directly in Premiere Pro to, to give you, again, this is just to give you a sense of what it's like and to encourage you to try it for yourself and see, um, see how, it, how it works for you. Um, so the, the basic steps, um, it, I, I, there, there are different ways of sort of cutting and slicing this, no, no um, pun intended from our, our cooking analogy. But I'm going to uh, use sort of four basic steps that you can imagine uh, how the editing process uh, could work. The, the first thing is to, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate all of these in, in, um, in or, or most of these in, in Premiere Pro as well. So the, the first thing is to import your raw media. So these are all your, um, not only your uh, video files that you have shot, uh, you, you might also have video files that other people shot. Uh, you might have still images that you, that you might want to use. You might have music. Uh, you might have other audio narration, like all these things you can you can you can you sort of bring into a project, and you're basically putting it onto uh, your your kitchen counter so that you have it available to uh, to, to put in your in into your video. Um, the the second thing is to kind of get it in sequence. So this is about um, uh, you know how how do you how do you, you you take these different files and you put them onto uh, what what's called like a like a timeline, and We'll, we'll show you again like how this works. The third thing is to spruce it up. And so this is, these are different enhancements that you can do both on a video and audio level. So uh, for example, with color, uh, you might do things like color correction where you're able to uh, like make the color look uh, like better and more vivid. Uh, with with uh, audio, you might have things where you're, uh, you're doing some like, um, uh, say like doing some like graphic equalization, you are doing some other things to kind of enhance the audio so it, it, it sounds better, that it's, it's, it sounds uh, easier to, to understand, and it just creates a more uh, kind of vibrant experience. And then finally, what you'll do is you'll, you'll uh, export your, your final video. So this is kind of like taking it out of, taking your, your, your stew or your soup like out of the pot and then putting it into like a bowl that you can, you can serve up to like an individual person. It would it'd be a little weird if you uh, told the person that in order to eat this dish, you got to go to the pot and eat directly out of the pot. Like that's not going to uh, be able to reach anybody. So that's that, that's the the exporting the final video is kind of putting it into like sort of serving size. Okay. So uh, again, we'll, we'll we'll demonstrate this shortly, but just a really quick uh, uh, overview of what we're about to go over. Um, we'll talk about some of the most important panels in in Premiere Pro. Uh, we'll talk about the sequence one. This is the the timeline. The project, the program, the source, and the effects. Now let's go through these uh, individually and and just give you some very quick exposure to give you some basic uh, concepts and vocabulary around this. Um, so the sequence panel is what we have uh, circled here. So this in in this particular um, shot, it's it's at the bottom of the the screen and the thing uh, circled with the the, the blue uh, ellipse. So this is where you put all of your uh, files and kind of arrange them in sequence. And you also kind of, <coughs> you also edit them in terms of like how much you want to use of each, of each clip. So that's where the majority of um, the, uh, the action happens. Um, the next thing is the project panel. In this, in this particular shot, it's in the top left, again, circled with, um, with, with the, uh, the blue circle there. 
the project panel is kind of like your, uh, your, your again, sort of the uh, kitchen counter. This is where you have all of your ingredients laid out. So these are all the different uh, video files, uh, image files, uh, audio files that you have imported in your project. And so they, you have them all available here in your, in your, in your project panel. Um, the next thing is the, uh, the source and the, the program panels. And this is one that, um, like, it, it, honestly, the, I think the concept is actually pretty simple, but it took me a while to kind of understand like, what, what these were. So um, let me explain what, what the difference is. Now, with both of them, what you'll see is you'll, you'll be able to like, watch video, uh, but they serve two different purposes. Uh, the program panel, or what's on the right of this particular screenshot, is that's viewing what's in your timeline. So that's your final video. That's like a preview of what you have arranged on the timeline that reflects all the cuts that you've made, uh, reflects like what you've selected. Um, it reflects everything that would go into kind of the, the final, it's kind of like a preview of the final dish. The source panel, you can also watch video, but what you're doing with the source panel is just like looking at each of the raw ingredients. So you're seeing what, the, what, does the, what does the whole thing look like? And, and we'll demo this a little bit in Premiere as well. And then finally, um, uh, you'll see in this particular uh, screenshot on the bottom left, um, the effects panel. So this is all of the different uh, things that you can do, like uh, you know, I mentioned, uh, like uh, color correction and like graphic equalization. And, uh, and then there's different things like cropping. This is also where you'd have all the kinds of transitions that you could add. Uh, so this is things like, like crossfades. Uh, you could have things like uh, you know, dip to black, dip to white. Uh, but all of these things are in your effects panel and in all uh, kind of neatly organized there. So, um, and and I'll, I'll demo this uh, very, very shortly. But uh, one of the, um, both the good things and the slightly kind of overwhelming things about Premiere Pro is uh, just like a lot of other software, like if you've ever used Microsoft Word, this is also true of Microsoft Word, there's a, there's a lot of um, different ways in which you can navigate the program. And the way I kind of organize it in my brain is there are certain ways that you navigate that are better when you're first starting because it, you can kind of see, you can see things uh, like all listed out. So for example, the, the menu bar uh, at the, like the, the, the top, uh, is something that is a good way when you're first starting when you don't know where everything is. And as you progress and as you get more experience, what happens is you, you start to switch which ways you use to navigate the program. You might certainly, you know, once you're comfortable with the menu bar, you might go on to like icons because you, you, you'll know what to, what to look for in the, in the icons. Or you might go on to uh, like right-click menus. And eventually like a lot of things, uh, when, when I'm editing now, a, lo a lot of things I use are through keyboard shortcuts. Uh, because you can you can do a lot of work very quickly, um, and uh, uh, Premiere is super logically laid out. It's it's not again it's not immediately obvious when you're first starting, but when once you start to kind of get going, uh, like going through the different ways in which you can kind of um, use different kind of edits, it's it's like literally all in a row, like on your on your left hand on your on your on your keyboard. But it takes a while. So I think one way to think about how you navigate through the program is. There are some ways that you're going to kind of lean on more when you're first starting, and then as you get more experience, you'll you'll use things that are that are faster, uh, that are maybe less immediately intuitive, but but it will increase your velocity, and, and actually they're pretty they actually end up being quite intuitive once you start to uh, get used to them. And so now um, I'm going to uh, switch over to uh, Premiere and do a little bit of a demo of some of the the uh, the, the, the key concepts here. And Glenn, before you do that, we had a couple of people asking, how do you actually start <coughs> Premiere Pro? So is it just clicking an icon and starting it up when you first go to open it up like this? We had one person say that they were getting a, a strange message, like something not uh, – let me see where the message was um, – new sequence and not knowing what to do with that. And I don't know if when you open it up, it just pops right open when you click on it or what? Yeah, that's, that's, a, great, uh, that's a great question. Like um, the, so, sometimes like the, the, the hardest steps are like the, the very, very first ones you're like, what, you know, what, what, what is this thing? And so I'm going to go a little off script here and show like address that, that particular um, uh, thing. So we'll, we'll come 
back to this in a second, but what uh, the person asking the question, and I'm sorry, can, can I get the name of the person? Sure, it's Don asked about the new sequence message coming up on his screen when he tries to open it. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Don, for, for the great question. So when, um, when, you're, when you're starting a new project, um, you, and let's say I go to, uh, and I'm going here, File, New, uh, Project. And again, this, this isn't like a full tutorial, but I just want to give you a sense of what Don is seeing. So when, when you start, you'll see uh, a dialog box like this, and it says New, new, new Project, and there's all these, uh, all these different options that are available here. Uh, one thing is with the, the Premiere Pro tutorial that I'll point you towards, it will walk you through all of these uh, introductory things. But there's, um, I, think, I think the main lesson here is that there's, there's a ton of choices when you first start. You're like, oh, time code, and then there's like, like audio and, and capture. Like what, what do these, these all mean? Um, to get the full detail on these things, I, I'll, um, I'd recommend using the, the tutorial, and it'll kind of walk you through navigating the um, kind of the finer points of uh, kind of getting started in these first few steps. But um, but I, I completely it, it's a good question, Don. Uh, this it's, it's a little bit um, uh, I, 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 to give you sort of a full full answer, it would it would, it would take longer. But I'd, I'd be happy to uh, to discuss with you as well, like after you've 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 tried things out. But there's there's a lot of choices here. The main thing is. Uh, go use the tutorial, and then that will help you kind of navigate these first few steps. Okay, and were there any other questions, Becky? That... Um, there are some other questions in the queue, but most of them are, are not connected to sort of the starting up and initial process with Premiere. Okay. So we can hold those until later. We do have them in the queue, though, so don't worry. We, we will get to them when we get to Q&A. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to come back to um, the project that we have, and so <clears throat> so here is uh, Adobe Premiere, and then so uh, just to kind of recap what what, what we just talked about uh, in the last few slides, this is the here's 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 our sequence here, and then uh, here's our project here, project panel here. So this is you can see here that we have all of these different uh, uh, assets that we have already imported. Uh, here is our, um, our program mon uh, panel. And so if I, if I play this, and I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to come across in the webinar, but you'll see how, um, like what you see in the program panel, you can see this, it's progressing through the sequence, and then the program panel is showing you what it looks like in its current form in, in, in the sequence. And then the source, um, I'll demonstrate the source here real quick. So if I go to my, uh, my, my project um, here, um, and I'll just open up like, let's say I want to see uh, what this particular uh, asset or ingredient looks like. I'm just going to double click on it. And then I can preview it uh, here in my, my source panel, so it, it appears, and I can see the, the, the full the, the full video here. And you'll see that, like in both the, the program and the source, you can actually shuttle through a lot of video very quickly. So you can, instead of having to watch uh, like uh, like a minute of video to find that five seconds that you wanted to use, you can kind of scrub through it very very quickly and find like okay, it's 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 like right here, like where the where the the, the the bottle's emptying. That's that's the part that I want to capture, or or it's like right here where he, where he's doing the the pouring. Um, and there's a lot of different like ways in which uh, Premiere helps you kind of go through this stuff uh, very very quickly. And you can you can um, you can uh, take like only the video, or you can take only the audio, or you can take both the audio and the video. There's all these different uh, ways in which you can you can uh, you can you can take the stuff. But let's. Let's demonstrate really quickly uh, what it's like to, to import files into Premiere. So uh, I'm going to just uh, right click here and uh, import. And then I just navigate to wherever my, my files are. And then let's say I want to, um, I want to uh, import like all, all of like these four files in. I just highlight them open them, 
And then now you can see in my project uh, panel here on the, on the left top, uh, all of those files I just clicked on, they're now available for me to, to put into, into the project. So that's, that's a very quick demo of importing things. Now let's show a demonstration of what it's like to take files and put them on the, the timeline. So I'm going to close this uh, sequence. And then let's start, we'll, we'll start a new sequence. So uh, I'm going to start with, uh, let's say I want to start with uh, this, this shot here of, uh, this, is, this is a sort of a shot of, <laughs> a shot of a baby. And uh, I want to make that the first thing in my sequence. So all, um, I'll, just to show you how, how, um, how relatively easy this is, you just, uh, I click on this, and then I drag it into the timeline or the sequence, and then I release it. And then all of a sudden, I have it here. And you can see if I um, just kind of, now, now I have it into my timeline. And then let's say I wanted to uh, add like other things, like I wanted to do the over the, the over the shoulder shot, like right after that, then I would just drag it like that. And then, um, Let's say I want the wide shot and do it like that. And then just by doing that, uh, let's go to, let's, let's go ahead and watch this in the program. So the, uh, direct your attention to the top right. All of a sudden I have those things. There's the video and it's literally just like drag and dropping. Whoops, I put the wrong, the wrong clip there, but, but you can see that it's just a matter of like drag and drop where you can put things into uh, the timeline. Now you can, you can do all sorts of different kinds of cuts and edits here, but let me just show you, like, let's say I wanted on this last one here, okay, there's the hand. And let's say I want to cut it, instead of having it go all the way like this, I want it to cut like right here. So all I do is grab the end of it, and then I just make it shorter like this. And then now all we have left is that. So it's, it's, um, it's literally that, that easy to kind of change the length of what you're using. Um, and there's all sorts of ways in which you, you, can, you can cut up. Like if I wanted to, uh, I'm, I'm going to just quickly demo like this razor tool where I can cut um, a clip in, in half and then like that. And then uh, I'll switch back to the selection tool. And I can move things around and then I can add like other things like I can sort of change the order of things like this and like that, but that's kind of a mess. But um, that just gives you a sense of like what the interface is like in terms of manipulating things in the timeline. Um, there's a lot of like uh, sort of finer art in, in, in this, this, this editing, but it's not as uh, like arcane and crazy as you might think. It's, it's actually pretty simple to get started. What happens, uh, what ends up being like the hardest to do is figuring things out like, you know, where do I want to make my edit? Like what, what are the, like how, how finely do I want to cut it? And that takes some getting used to, but overall the interface itself is, is really not, um, not, not that, uh, not that tough to do. So um, I also want to, um, one other thing that that's, that I think is good to know about Premiere is everything can be re rearranged in terms of the way the panels are laid out. So if I wanted to move, say, um, let's say I, some people like, like I, I like my project panel right right here, but let's say I wanted it like over on the right. I could take it, I can take this, click on it, and I can drag it over to um, like different spots like this. So I'm, I'm rearranging my interface. I can drag this like this. And people can rearrange their interface in, in different ways. So it might not look exactly like, uh, like this when, um, when you first open Premiere, but know that you can rearrange the, the panels. The main, the main thing to remember is just remember like what are your main panels that you want to, uh, you, you want to feature, the, the sequence, the program, the source, the project, all that stuff. Um, and again, the tutorial that will point you to will kind of help expose you to that as well. Um, so that's that's I, I know that's a super fast forward thing, uh, but let me let me just show you real quick like the uh, some of the uh, the uh, video effects. And so if I wanted to do something like uh, 
uh, like color correction, um, I could I can drag that in like this, and then uh, then I'm I'm able to do um, I'm able to do like uh, all kinds of uh, things with the way the color looks, and there's all these different. Uh, controls that I have available that help me do these kind of adjustments. So if I wanted to um, uh, do this, like I can, you know, I, I can like brighten this or I can increase the saturation level and stuff like that. So these are all very like powerful things that are that are available in in uh, Premiere Pro. Uh, but overall, the, the the interface probably takes. There's a few things like. Um, once you figure out like things like getting the your your first sequence in, but um, and getting your first files imported, once you get like the first few steps, I think the next af after like steps one and two, like steps three, four, and five become a lot more intuitive. Um, so uh, coming back to our slide deck here, um, I think the main thing to do though is uh, if you really want to find out if Premiere Pro is for you. Um, I, I highly, highly recommend that you try uh, a free trial of Premiere Pro, and this is this is available on uh, Adobe's website. And uh, TechSoup has uh, has some um, uh, also has an offer with Premiere Pro, but you could you can get the free trial by itself through the Adobe website. And, and Becky, correct me if I'm wrong. If that's that's the case. One thing to to highlight is um, if you're thinking about ordering uh, Creative Cloud through TechSoup, uh, but you want to try the free trial first. We rec uh, for, for a variety of reasons, like we recommend that for your free trial use, um, I, don't, I don't know exactly Becky how you explain this, but that use your personal email address for the free trial or like your non-work e email. Uh, use a different email than you would use if you ended up uh, purchasing uh, uh, the uh, Creative Cloud offer through 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 TechSoup, uh, so that you have uh, two. And we, we can we can kind of go through the details on that, but we'll um, we'll have that. So. Um, this particular tutorial on Adobe's website, how to edit videos with Premiere Pro, uh, this is a really uh, great beginner tutorial for uh, showing how Premiere Pro works in practice. And uh, the, the URL is, is, is there. You, you, if, if you search for it on, on, on Google, you'll, you'll also be able to find it pretty quickly. And what this is is a 45-minute tutorial that kind of steps you through using Premiere Pro uh, to, uh, to edit like, some sample files. And one of, the, one of the great things about this is it, <coughs> um, it gives you sample files to practice with. So it gives you like, all the video files and the audio files and all that stuff, so you don't have to figure that part of it out. And you can just practice on the editing itself and experience what it's like to edit a video in Premiere Pro. So if you're, you're, you're interested, I highly recommend uh, doing the free trial and then going through this tutorial, how to edit videos with Premiere Pro to get some direct experience of what uh, Premiere Pro is like. Um, and then there's, uh, for tutorials on specific topics, uh, Ad Adobe also has a lot of uh, uh, additional uh, training materials on its site, um, the URL is there uh, on very specific topics. But I think I, more than anything else, I really want to kind of emphasize this idea of if, if you're wondering if Premiere Pro is for you, uh, if you're wondering if, if you can get used to it, I, w I, I highly recommend doing the free trial and then try doing this 45-minute tutor tutorial. And by the end of that, you'll have a much better feel uh, specifically for you whether uh, uh, Premiere Pro is something that makes sense for you and your organization. And so that ends uh, th uh, this part of the presentation, and I guess we can uh, move on to uh, uh, Q&A. Great. Thank you for that, Glenn. Um, we had a couple of specific questions, so we may want to have you still showing your uh, screen. But we had, um, let's see, Pam had asked, um, what did you use when you selected just part of the video that you were dragging and dropping into the timeline? How were you able to select part of it and, and maybe ex even expanding the timeline how you did where it was a teeny little blip on it and then you stretched it out? I think that's even new to people. So can you show how you did that? Thanks. Sure. Sure thing. That's a, that's, that's a great question. So um, when, I, when I did the uh, – uh, 
Okay, when I did the, uh, sorry, that's a great question. So the when when I did the demo, I had, I had already kind of pre-selected uh, which part parts of the clip I'd used. But let's let's do this from scratch and just kind of show um, what this looks like. So here is our raw um, our raw green. Again, we're looking at our source uh, uh, panel here, and so this is um, this this raw cut here is a total of um, let's see of uh, 12 seconds. And so if we watch this, here's here's our raw thing. And as we as I watch it, I say like you know I don't I don't want I really don't want the entire 12 seconds. That's kind of there's some there's some stuff happening here at the beginning. I mean there's a little I, I guess they're eating from the bottle, but it's, that's not that interesting. And stuff at the end is really not that interesting. But it's really this what I'm trying to capture here is this this moment of the hand, the hand, the hand. And so um, what I can do in Premiere Pro is mark the, the in and the out of what I want to do. So I'm going to um, re just reset this. So if I w to select, like, let's say I want to start using it right here where the hand starts to come off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark an in point here like this. And then you'll notice that this is now uh, the, the part that is highlighted is much is much less. And then let's say I want to stop like right after the hand comes back on here. I mark an out. And then now when I drag it onto the timeline, instead of dragging the the entire 12 seconds, I'm dragging literally just like the two almost three seconds that that, that I highlighted here. And when I put it on the timeline, you'll see that I just have like that two to three seconds of video here, two, two, two seconds and, and 20 frames. So that, that's one way in which you can select what, you, uh, what, what you're using. Um, but there, there's a bunch of different ways in which you can do it. Like an, another way is what I had uh, kind of quickly uh, demoed earlier of you can, you can switch like how, you can switch it in the timeline. So actually to answer the second part of your question, how do I zoom in? Uh, so see this bar here at the bottom, this little slider bar? Now if I drag this, I can go much bigger or much smaller like this. And so when I go big like this, I can make really, really fine cuts. So, um, so I'm going to, let's say I just want to take off uh, like literally like two frames. So that's like 2 thirtieths or 1 15th of a second. I can also do it here in the timeline. So I drag it like this, and there's one frame, there's two frames, and there's, there's your edit, like that. And I can zoom back like this, and then so the, the, the edit reflects that, that, that change. So, so there, to, to sum up, there's, there's ways in which you can do it when you're first, uh, before you even put it onto the timeline, you can, you can mark in and out points. And then after it's on the timeline, you can also like, keep on making adjustments within, within the timeline. Great. Uh, that's, I think, really helpful to see kind of how to expand that timeline and adjust things. And um, as a follow-up question, Keith asks uh, if you could talk a little bit about workflow. Uh, so as far as the process, you're pulling in these pieces. Somebody else also asked about you know, if you're wanting to import audio and lay it over, where would you pull that in? So once you've got all of your ingredients to make your meal and you're plugging them in, what do you do after that? Yeah, that, that, that's a that's a, that's a great question, uh, Keith. That the um, I I take like a, a step back, and maybe Keith, this is something you've already you've already thought about it, might, but I want to kind of set context for um, uh, for everyone on this on this webinar. Um, I think it's 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 it, before you even get into Premiere, uh, it's important to kind of have a plan of what you want your your video to be like, and we have a lot of resources in our in our uh, uh, in our uh, video storytelling resources at, at TechSoup around this. But to kind of plan like what um, what shots are you going to use generally, like what what's the uh, what's what, and then not only what shots you're going to use, but like what is what's the flow of your story that you're trying to tell in your video, and kind of think about the different the the, the different shots and have kind of a um, 
like before I even start in Premiere, I, I have sort of a rough sense of what I'm going to do uh, to, to tell that story. But that said, when you're, when you're in, in workflow, you kind of have the first rough cut, and then I, I organize things uh, within the project. This is not a good example, but like in the, within the project bin, I'll have things organized by different types of footage. Um, and I'll have like audio in a folder, I'll have uh, video in a folder, but, and then depending on how big the project is, I might sort of divide things in terms of where they, uh, uh, where they occur in, 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 in the video. Uh, but I think uh, in, in terms of workflow, um, I think it's important to have kind of a rough plan first of like how you're going to um, how you're going to organize your, like what's going to happen in the video, what's roughly going to happen, and then you can organize your assets around that. I, I, that's not a very, I'm, I'm not sure if I quite answered the question though, uh, Becky, like I, I don't know if there's, if there's like a more specific question from Keith that um, I feel like I actually kind of talked around it. We'll see if he follows up with some more. Um, but okay. we do have a number of other questions in here too. Uh, just asking you know, when you import some other type of file, for example, if you want to import an audio file, uh, mm -hmm. where does that come in? And then on the converse, the, the, what are the outputs? So can you export out in a number of different yeah. formats? So what kind yeah. of stuff can you bring in? What can you put out? Okay, that's, that's uh, another very good question. So with, uh, let's, let's take the example of uh, an audio track, and I, I don't think you'll be able to, um, to, to, to hear this, but uh, let me see if I can, uh, I'll just, I'll just uh, <coughs> excuse me, demo it here. So if I go import, and then let's say there's, here's, here's an audio track, like this is um, it's an audio track, it's an MP3 uh, called uh, Sunshine in My Heart. And uh, is th th uh, another resource I'd, I'd point you to is the, the YouTube audio library it has a ton of free uh, audio that you can use in your, in, your, in your video projects. And I think this is where I got it. So if I, if I put that in, uh, if I import that, I can do this. And so I'm bringing it into my project. Well, I've actually, and, and then from there, I can drag that. Um, let me just get rid of, or sorry, one second here. Um, let's say I want to add that to, um, uh, to this project here. I just drag that audio as another track that's happening in this, uh, in this, uh, in this video. So now, now you have uh, this, not only this audio, but also this, this audio that I've added. And then you can change the, um, the levels of each track. You can do it through, through here. You can do it through, um, uh, there, you can do it through like there's like a track mixer. There's all these different ways in which you can you can manipulate this. So that that kind of is a quick demo of what it's like to take like other things and then lay them. There, there's a lot of different like layers you can put of of different video layers, different audio layers. Now as far as exporting it, um, I'll just do a quick uh, demo of that. So I'm gonna let's say I want to export. Um, let's take this one actually. Let's say I want to export this into a single a single file that I can upload to uh, YouTube or, or, or Facebook or elsewhere. Um, so what I do is I, I highlight this sequence like this and go to File and then go to Export and I go to Media. And then from here, um, uh, and again, the, 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 the uh, tutorial will, will kind of step you through this as well. There's a lot of different choices that you have in terms of, and again, this, I know this can seem kind of overwhelming. There's like all these different things of like, like what, what format do I use? Um, I, I usually use H.264, which is kind of like a standard format for, for, uh, for, for things on, uh, on, on YouTube or other online video. And then uh, there's different choices that I have here. And then once I click on export, um, I'll go ahead and click on it just to show what happens it will start uh, taking all of those different raw files and start combining them into a single, uh, like a single output file, in this case, an in, 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 in MP4 file. Uh, and then you can take that file and then uh, share it on the internet or use it in other ways. 
but when it um, when you when you you just have to use this this export process, and then usually the depending on the project, sometimes the export process can take uh, like a few minutes to to, to complete. Terrific. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing just because I have a little bit of other content to share about how to access it if you're interested in the, the subscription offer. And I also had a couple of questions um, where people were asking, you know, if you just need to lop off you know, a chunk at the end of a video or a chunk at the beginning of the video, should I use this program? You certainly can. It may be more than what you need just to lop off a chunk of video. Um, and even many smartphones have video editors that can just cut and do some big kind of hacks at either end. So if you're needing uh, something just to do a, a simple cut, um, you know, there may be other tools that you already have for free on your desktop, though this certainly can do that and can do it down to 1 60th of a second. So it's very, very fine in its ability to do those kind of edits. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about where to get Adobe Creative Cloud and also Adobe Premiere Elements if you decide that you don't necessarily need the, the more robust offer uh, of what Adobe Premiere Pro offers. You can check out the Adobe program by going to the TechSoup site and browsing by donor or provider. You can select Adobe. And that will take you to our general donation page. which Su Susan has just chatted out that link. You can get there from TechSoup.org slash Adobe as well. We also have this program page that we created recently that highlights what the, what the different programs are uh, that are available and the different applications that are available as part of it. It also has a cute little video of some of our colleagues here at TechSoup that, that explain how it all works. Um, and you can check out the different options. This is the Adobe Creative Cloud All Apps uh, offer that's available. It's a one-year individual, oops, sorry, one-year individual membership that you get access to the discounted rates. You pay the $5 admin fee to TechSoup, and that gets you a 60% discount the first year off of the subscription. So it's a rate of $19.99 paid monthly to Adobe for that first year. Subsequent years are 40% discount. And so this is a cloud subscription even though the products are downloaded and syncing with Adobe um, to get the latest updates. You are getting the newest uh, features and bells and whistles as they roll out as opposed to how you know, there used to be a Creative Suite that was released every year. Now you are getting those features added in as they become available. Uh, for those of you who decide maybe you don't need the full big robust uh, package of apps, um, there isn't a standalone Adobe Promo Pre sorry, Premiere Pro, uh, just that app right now through our program. Um, but we also have the Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements bundle. And this is an installed program, so you would actually get this electronic uh, license key and be able to install it on your machine. And this is a single license for it for $27. And this is the consumer grade. So this is not the one that you would edit uh, your Hollywood feature film with. This is what you could use for um, you know, editing your uh, making those cuts and adding in some small overlays or a little bit of text here and there maybe. Um, but it's not going to have the, the fine editing features. And when I say fine, I mean just very detailed and very, you know, where you can get to 1 60th of a second if you need to. Um, so those are some options available to you. And then I have this on here just for those of you who may be interested in the photo package as well, that they also have a photography plan only. So if you are looking for access just to Adobe Photo Tools, you can get that too. Some additional learning resources. Uh, we've, I've linked to the Adobe Premiere Pro video tutorials. Uh, Glenn had this link as well. This takes you to all of the tutorials. Some are 2 minutes long. Some are 45 minutes long. There's a whole collection of them for different features and different uh, steps that you may want to take. These are all created by Adobe. So um, they are very high uh, production value. They look great. And they show you kind of how to do these different steps in their video editing. Um, the introduction is just a 2 minute little introduction to how it works. And then that 45 minute long video that Glenn talked about that really takes you through all of the beginner processes. Uh, these will all be shared in the follow-up email. You'll get these links as well and you'll be able to find them on SlideShare and click from there as well. If you got that reminder email before we started, the slides are 
uh, available to download, so you can click into these too. Um, and then we have a blog post that's great that compares Adobe Premiere Elements versus Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. So it actually has a great chart in it that tells you this feature is available in this consumer grade program. It's available in this Pro version. And so you can really compare side by side these two products to get an idea of which one really will fit your needs best. Um, and then some general resources on the Adobe Creative Cloud offer and how the product donation program and discount program works. Um, this last one, how to choose the right Adobe app, is uh, a great little interactive tool. If you're not sure which Adobe app is the right tool, if you're trying to design a newsletter and you're not sure if you're picking the right tool, is it Photoshop, is it Illustrator, is it InDesign, this is a great kind of choose your own adventure tool that will help you. Um, we are at the top of the hour, and I know we asked a few questions already, but I'd love it if you could go ahead and chat in one thing you learned in today's webinar that you will take home and try to implement, or that you'll dig in to do a little bit more research on. We'd also ask that you share this information with your friends and colleagues who may benefit from it, and that you would take a moment to complete the post-event survey available uh, after this webinar ends. It will pop up on your screen. Lastly, I'd like to invite you to join us for upcoming webinars. We are going to have a couple more this week, one on the changing landscape of library privacy, and then we'll be talking about how to help children, so if you're working in children's literacy, how to help children build their literacy skills in this digital age. And then we'll talk about Microsoft Outlook and get some tips and tricks on managing and wrangling our inboxes on the 30th. Uh, we'll have more coming soon, so we hope you'll join us for those. Thank you so much, Glenn, for your uh, expertise sharing today. And thank you to Susan for uh, helping on the back end, and for Terry for helping on the back end. Lastly, I'd like to thank ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor, for their use of their product to present these webinars. Uh, please take a moment to complete that post-event survey that will pop up after. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.